The first law of thermodynamics. It states that the change of the internal energy of a closed system is equal to the amount of heat supplied to the system minus the amount of work done by the system on its surroundings. An equivalent statement is that perpetual motion machines of the first kind are impossible. Second law of thermodynamics. Its first formulation is credited to the French scientist Carnot, who in 1824 showed that there is an upper limit to the efficiency of conversion of heat to work in a heat engine. Corollaries Perpetual motion of the second kind before the establishment of the second law, many people who were interested in inventing a perpetual motion machine had tried to circumvent the restrictions of first law of thermodynamics by extracting the mass of internal energy of the environment as the power of the machine. Such a machine is called a perpetual motion machine of the second kind. The second law declared the impossibility of such machines. I have recently been covering how water is fuel. I am in the process of making an electrical generator that runs off of water, converted to HHO. During my research, I have discovered that perpetual motion machines are not impossible. And thanks to David of Enslaved by Media, we now have confirmation of this.
Now you've seen this thing many times, but we're going to take a much closer look at it today. What this is, is an air turbine starter for a jet engine. This jet engine. And there we go, our starter's attached, the airline is hooked up, the start cart's in position, and Mr. Bill is warming up the fuel system so we get a little bit of light rain just before we run this engine. What's up everybody, welcome back to Malberto, safety is number one priority and today we're gonna do a compressed air experiment. All we're gonna do is empty water bottle, let's get to it. So check it out, it's very easy. Make sure your lid is pretty tight and just start twisting it. Just twist it. Don't worry, it's not gonna explode in your hand. And guess what, we got vacuum in there, but then we're gonna and twist it over here. Check it out. Now we got, I don't know if you see it on camera, but we got smoke bubbles. All right, one more time. Make sure your lid, your lid is closed and just spin it around. Just put it in your hand like that and spin it around. And just a take. Do this right, open it quick, kind of quick. Check out the smoke. How is that scientifically possible? What kind of smoke is this? Is there cool smoke rings? We all know that there are real people flying in real planes all over the world right now. But those of us that have been paying attention know that there's something wrong with the trails that we're seeing up in the sky. The third dispensation begins with free energy, over unity, and hydrogen implosions explained. In this hangout, I talked about how, as I've been researching about HHO, I've come across over unity engines. This is the type of engine that most caught my attention. We are looking at a simplified and improved version of the Clem engine, which is just a single cylinder. This engine runs cold and is simple enough for many people to be able to build one. 
With a rotating cylinder of just 10 inches diameter, a self-powered output of 10 horsepower can be achieved, and 10 horsepower is 7.5 kilowatts, so driving a generator with it would power a household. The output power increases with rotor diameter and with rate of spin, and so in order to stop the device accelerating until it destroys itself, an inflow valve to limit the water entering the rotating cylinder is an important control requirement. Fuelless engines, the energy in air, Bob Teal's compressed air engine. Bob Neal's design is a compressed air operated engine and compressor where the operation of the engine keeps resupplying the compressed air tank. Scott Robertson's compressor system, Bob Neal's system could do with some further explanation so here's an idea from Scott Robertson. What you need to understand very clearly is that this is an exponential power engine. The output power is proportional to the square of the rotation speed. So double the revolution speed and you quadruple the output power. Also the output power is proportional to the square of the rotor diameter. So double the diameter and that quadruples the output power. So if you double the rotor cylinder diameter and double the rotation speed, the output power goes by a factor of 16. So many thank yous to David of Enslaved by Media for providing confirmation that over Unity engines do exist. Find those two atoms together. Here we go. Three, two, one. <laughs> oh my God. Isn't that amazing? Engines that run on water and over Unity engines have been around for a long time now, people. As a manufacturer, power needs are 24-7 because we have refrigeration and pumps and things that are operating. It was both from energy efficiency and from air emissions, I guess, that I, I really wanted to, to give the fuel cell a try. We've got four 250 kilowatt units that are considered a direct fuel cell, so they don't need a separate source of hydrogen. They have an internal process that reforms the hydrogen out of the feed gas. 